This is what's beyond the Excel Synchro. What are you planning to do? The stage that breaks boundaries. Top clear mind. Nani. Undead Observe. Level 5 Wanda Magician Tombs, Level 2 Recipro Dragonfly, and Level 5 Power Gladiator. Limiter Removal. Level Max. Regulator Open. All clear. Infinite, Infinite power, power break through time and space to open the unknown world. Go, Go Delta, Delta! Excel! Come on! Tech Genius! Power Cannon! What's up, what's the weatherman back with a brand new video and I had a little bit of a feeling and an inkling one could say intuition on which deck you guys wanted to see next and as the people's champion I just knew that I had to return to my favorite deck in the game and bring you guys this video. Now I know I'm a little bit late. I work 60 hour weeks outside of this Yu-Gi-Oh channel so I do appreciate you guys' patience. Bye. The deck has gotten a couple new cards and a new skill since its last iteration that have boosted the deck significantly. The new skill is Limiter Removal. Removal. Regulator Open. The skill allows us to reveal a level three or lower TG, so pretty much any TG in the deck that isn't Serpent, and then add to your deck from your hand the card Limiter Removal, which is in a new box that we just got recently. The skill says we can't special summon any monsters from the main deck that aren't TG monsters, and we can't activate the effect of level seven or higher monsters on the opponent's turn, but that's not too big of a deal. The three cards we just received are obviously Limiter Removal, being that we have to add him from the deck in the skill as well as tg shooting star and tg trident launcher quick free to play alert though you guys only really need one limiter removal and one trident launcher and you may not even need shooting star at all so the deck aims to end on a tg halbert cannon for a summon negate as well as a trident for protection from targeting effects and a blade blaster or tg shooting star in your graveyard so that you can float into it if cannon is sent to the graveyard now let's get into how all of this is done class let's flip to chapter one the deck has an absurd amount of routes you could take but i I'll be focusing on the most consistent routes that I personally take with the deck. For starters, when you're going first, you're basically taking one of three routes. Line A and line B are both assuming that you don't get hit with a hand trap, and line C will be if your opponent does have a hand trap. So let's just stick with me and we'll get through it. For line A, you're gonna want to have a serpent and a drill or a booster raptor in your hand, which will be easy to do because if we don't have them, we can just activate the skill to search for limiter removal, which allows us to add two differently named TGs at the cost of discarding any card from our hand. This will allow us to make a level five star guardian by normal summoning serpent and then special summoning booster raptor because you have a tg monster on the field or special summon drill fish because you control all tg monsters then you can synchro summon into star guardian which on special summon will allow you to target a tg in your grave and then add it to your hand you're going to choose serpent in the grave because it has the effect to special summon a level four or lower tg monster in your graveyard so you're going to special summon your serpent after adding it back to your hand which will activate to revive your booster raptor or drill fish whichever one you use back to the field from here you're going to use these three to link into trident launcher which on link summon will let you special summon three tg monsters being one from your hand one from your deck and one from the grave but you have to be able to summon three monsters so keep in mind that you can't decide to only summon two monsters it's just not going to activate if you don't have all of the conditions now the card you pick from hand ideally will be striker or wolf but as long as it isn't gear zombie it, you're pretty much fine it really doesn't matter that deeply so assuming it's striker or wolf that you summon from your hand you're going to want to summon from deck either striker or wolf from your deck whichever one is not currently on the field lastly you're going to summon your star guardian from your graveyard now you have a level five star guardian as well as a wolf and striker which will allow you to make another level five synchro to go alongside your star guardian which is a tuner so now you're going to synchro using the wolf and striker to go into power gladiator but make sure you leave a zone open as being pointed at by trident because you're going to activate the skill to set recipro on the field and you want it to be protected because trident protects tg synchro monsters that it points to with its link arrows we're going to synchro using our fives to go into blade blaster or shooting star whichever 10 you prefer then use recipro to send your level 10 to grave to resummon your two level fives you want recipro to be protected from targeting so that they can't veiler it when you activate it to target your level 10 and send it to the graveyard that way if they veiler it you pretty much just wasted your whole time so if you have it sitting there protected they can't veiler it now you're going to synchro into a tg halberd cannon this gives you a 4,000 attack and defense summon negate that can't be targeted because of trident and floats into blade blaster or shooting star in the grave to give you survivability 
and you should have about two cards left in your hand after doing this. For line B, you're going to want to have Serpent, Booster, or Drill, as well as a Wolf and a Zombie. You're going to start off the same way as last time by Normal Summoning Screw Serpent and Special Summoning Booster Raptor. But this time, once you Special Summon your Booster Raptor, you're going to get a prompt to Special Summon your Wolf, and you are going to activate it. Now you're going to Synchro into Star Guardian using your Serpent and Booster Raptor, and then you're going to add back your Screw Serpent to the hand, but you're not going to Special Summon it just yet. Now you're going to Special Summon the Gear Zombie in your hand by targeting either your Star Guardian or your Wolf, and then reducing by a thousand attacks to special summon your zombie. Now you're going to synchro using wolf and zombie to go into Herald of the Arclight, which says any monster sent from hand or main deck to grave is banished instead, and it's also an omni negate, so it can negate a monster spell or trap, and Herald negates the activation of a monster spell or trap effect. So now you're going to synchro into Power Gladiator by special summoning Serpent and then reviving your booster raptor, and then you're going to activate your skill to put Recipro on the field and then flip it up, use those three remaining monsters to go into cannon now you've got a summon negate that will still float even though it's not going to float into a blade blast or a shooting star you can still float into a star guardian or any other tg in your graveyard maybe even serpent just to on special summon special summon another tg just to help you survive so even though there is no level 10 in grave cannon actually special summons any tg once it's sent to graveyard so you could just special summon something else line c is how to make the board through disruptions going first before diving into line c we're going to show you the weatherman hand trap checklist these are the list of actions i take to see if my opponent has any hand traps and what they are. The three hand traps we're going to check for are going to be Effect Veiler, Mourner, and DD Crow. Step one, if you have Screw Serpent in your hand, Normal Summon it. And if you get a delay, that means your opponent has an Effect Veiler in their hand. Then you could activate the skill to give yourself Limiter Removal. When you activate Limiter Removal and discard a card, this is going to tell you if they have DD Crow in their hand. Because the, once a card hits the graveyard, this is going to prompt because DD now has reached this condition. There is a card to banish from my grave. So if there is a delay, it means that they have a DD Crow in their hand. Once you special summon booster to the field, assuming you didn't get a delay in the other two scenarios, if you get a delay here, this means our opponent has Mourner because it is similar to Valor, but it only activates to negate something after something was special summoned. This is how you're going to do your little checklist to see which cards you're going to search for. I will say searching for Mourner is a little bit more difficult of the three because you can check for the first two without actually doing your search. But if you're, you know, for example, you know, you've got your wolf in your hand and whatnot. If you special summon the booster, you've pretty much committed to that play because you're probably going to click no to wolf so it is a little bit harder to check for mourner but effect valor and crow are pretty easy to check for so let's start the combo from the top to play through a valor or a crow you just need two tgs in your starting hand being one of striker serpent wolf booster or drill fish as long as the two cards in your hand are one of those cards then you are fine once you do your checklist you realize you discarded a card and you got a delay meaning your opponent has a dd crow well you're going to search for whichever two tgs you're missing so that your hand should be a striker wolf serpent and a booster or drill fish the beginning of this you're going to do exactly what you did in line a all the way up to star guardian but once you synchro summon star guardian your opponent will dd crow your serpent which is fine you're not going to be able to make your link three play but we are still going to be able to summon cannon from here as long as you made sure that you had those four cards in your hand which is easy because all you need to do like i said is open two tgs being any of those you're going to use your star guardian to special summon striker which will prompt your war wolf to activate to summon itself so from here you're gonna have a level three and a level two tuner on the field now we can synchro into power gladiator and then activate the skill to place recipro bam we're right back into our cannon Valor is pretty simple you'll just need to have a gear zombie instead of a striker in your hand because star guardian won't be able to special summon the striker from your hand so earlier in the combo where you would normally say no to wolf's ability to special itself from the hand you're gonna say yes instead and after your star guardian gets negated you'll use the gear zombie to reduce wolf special summon from the hand then you can use Serpent and Grave to boost Wolf or Zombies level up by one so that you can go into your level five non-tuner using the skill to get your Recipro and that's how you'll cannon through a Veiler. Now, if you know that your opponent does not have a DD Crow or a Veiler, then you could synchro with your two level fives to go into a Blade Blaster or a Shooting Star and then use Recipro to send it to Graveyard to revive your two five. And that way, once you go into cannon now, your cannon will float into a Blade Blaster or a Shooting Star. But if you do think that your opponent 
around it does have another DD Crow or a Veiler, then you wouldn't do this because you would just be playing directly into it after you just pretty much survived being hit by one. So if you do think they have another one, then you're just going to synchro into cannon here without actually making your level 10. And like I said earlier, you will still be able to float into something. You just won't be floating into your level 10 blade blaster or your shooting star. On your following turn, if your cannon is on the field or if it was removed and you floated into your blade blaster, then you'll, then you'll activate limiter removal and grave to add back a TG screw serpent from your graveyard. Normal summon serpent to revive booster or drill, go into star guardian, then use star guardian to add back warwolf to your hand. Special summon warwolf with the star guardian to make a battle wasp Hama, which can attack twice as long as it was summoned using a synchro material. Now keep in mind, limiter removal has the effect to banish itself from the graveyard to target a TG and grave and shuffle it back into the deck. Or if you control a machine TG, you can add it back to your hand. Both cannon and blade blaster are machines, but shooting star is not, which is why I don't play it in the extra deck. Now that that's done, we can pretty much go into what the deck does turn two. For the sake of time, I will be assuming that you watched what I just said a couple minutes ago, and I'm not going to be repeating anything. Going second, assuming your opponent has no disruptions or only one, you'll be summoning Quasar, which is done the same way you summon cannon, just minus the trident because trident locks you into TGs and minus the summoning of your level 10 because Quasar is not going to float into your level 10 TG anyway. Just get your two fives on the field and activate the skill. Bam, Quasar. I'll show you on screen, but it's literally the same way that you summon cannon. And the same way that line C worked going first to play through a, an effect veiler or a crow is the same thing you would do to play through one disruption. So you could still choose to play through one disruption and get a quasar on the field. But for our second option, we've pretty much got our nuke option, or at least that's what I like to call it. So you'll be going second and your opponent will likely be controlling a monster for you to special summon striker. And on special summon a striker, Wolf is gonna prompt to summon himself. Now you're gonna synchro summon Wander Magician for one, because I don't wanna waste a star guardian here. And two, because Wander Magician not only destroys back row on synchro summon, which is pretty useful, it also draws a card if it gets destroyed. So from here, we're gonna activate the skill, placing Recipro onto the field, then use Wander and Recipro to go into Black Rose and wipe the board. Now from here, we're gonna be able to normal summon our Screw Serpent and special summon Booster or Drill to make a Star Guardian, which will add Wolf back to our hand. Now we can special summon Wolf to the field and make Battle Wasp Palma for a double attack, which will be or should be game nine times out of 10. The same hand that can make Herald and Cannon going first could also make Herald and Quasar going second. Just keep in mind we Quasar for game because though he is a Omni Negate on our turn, he doesn't actually do anything on the opponent's turn. So you do want to make sure that when you're summoning Quasar, it is with the intent of winning the game because he is not going to do anything on the opponent's turn. It should just be for ending the game. Now, before I actually go into gameplay, I wanted to actually explain why I play some of the cards that I play. We're playing two Screw Serpent personally because the extra one is just if the first one gets DD Crow, to be honest, which you technically just need one copy of Screw Serpent. I played three Striker and three Wolf because they are so great going second as well as going first. They help you play through that effect Veiler or that DD Crow. So it's just always nice to have a Wolf or a Striker in your hand. I played three uh, of a mixture of Drill and Booster. I played two Drill, one Booster. I don't think it matters too, too deeply the ratio that you play between them. If it's two Booster, one Drill, if it's three, I just play both because Booster special summons itself under a better condition. You just need one TG on the field to be able to special summon itself, but it is a hard once per turn. So you're not going to be able to special summon another copy of itself. Whereas Drill does let you special summon itself more than once per turn. However, it can only special summon itself if you control exclusively TG monsters. So if you have any non TG on the field, it won't be able to special summon itself. So I like to use them to kind of help to play through back row to help summon that trident if we get stopped and still go into our plays. It's just nice to have an extra special summon and an extra TG name in our hand. We play one gear zombie because it is literally only useful for the Herald play. It's not really that useful for anything else. You don't really want to summon it with trident from your hand because it's a level one tuner. If it was a level one non tuner, you could summon serpent beside it, but because it is a tuner, it kind of makes going into cannon impossible if you summon it with trident. So it's just really not that great outside of the herald play. And then as far as our staples, DD Crow is just the most important hand trap in the game right now. At one point I was playing three crow into effect Veiler, but now I'm kind of thinking maybe three crow, three Skullmeister just to really make those grave decks hate us as much as possible. But I might still play effect Veiler to be honest with you. It just kind of depends. You could even play Ghost Mourner if you want it. Ghost Mourner is a really, really good card as well. And then we play two Compulse. So I wanted to make sure I was playing at least nine to 10 TGs just because when you're going second, playing through disruptions, you really want a TG heavy hand. Going first, you don't really want a TG heavy hand as much, but you know, it is still a good thing to see it. I play Moonlight just for those certain cards that just can't be destroyed or something like that.
like that. So we do play two sevens. Uh, Moonlight was actually what I chose to put in in place of Shooting Star. Uh, you could probably cut the Phoenix if you wanted, but I wouldn't know what to swap the Phoenix for and then obviously tried it. That's pretty much the deck. I just wanted to explain why I was playing everything at the number that it was and also the one limited removal before I get too far and, uh, ahead of myself. Now we're going to get into some gameplay and we're just going to show you guys how this deck operates. Alrighty, forgive me. I don't actually think I did my checklist in this video. I don't know why, but we've already got here the ability to activate the skill. We've got a drill fish and we've got a serpent so we can make our full combo here. We could summon the uh, cannon. No, yeah, we could do the cannon trident play here as well as set to compulse. Let's see what we do here. This was a little bit early, but personally, I would have done my checklist and then potentially search for a striker and a wolf to play through a hand trap. Let's see what we do here. Word. So we didn't do our checklist, but it looks like we're being a little bit bold here, which like I said, I would do our checklist first, but based on our hand, it looks like we're going for the Herald play. So we normal summoned and special summoned so that we can prompt our wolf. Now we're going to go Star Guardian, added Serpent back to our hand. And then before we go any further, we're probably going to activate our Gear Zombie to special summon itself beside our wolf. So we're going to target wolf, reducing it by a thousand to synchro into Herald of the Arclight. This card is absurdly good against zombies. Um, I, I don't really think they have a, a good out to it. Um, they can play droplet and stuff, but it's just not that great because you have to drop it from your field. It doesn't allow you to really drop it from the hand. So it, it's just unfortunate for them, to be honest with you. This is a really good board for us. This is what's beyond the Excel synchro. The stage that breaks boundaries. Top clear mind. Undead observed. Level 5 Wanda Magician Tunes, Level 2 Recipro Dragonfly, and Level 5 Power Gladiator. Limiter Removal, Level Max, Regulator Open, All Clear. Infinite Power, power Breakthrough break time, time and Space to open the unknown world. Go, Go Delta, Delta, Excel! Come on, take it. Power we've got a herald and we've got a compulsive so we've got a summon negate a omni negate that messes with his graveyard right so he set a monster oh big brain play the watch is happening so he set a monster and then on activation of mayakashi return which allowed him to add a card right or send it to the graveyard he activated droplet the reason he set a monster is because he needs to send a card from hand to grave or field to grave but because of Harold being on the field he can't actually send a card from his hand to graveyard so the only things he can send are cards from the field so Harold actually helps us play around droplet which is kind of funny so he set a monster that way he could send a monster and i couldn't negate it with Harold because droplet lets you negate monsters on the field as well as half their attack and it cannot be responded to by the same type of card that he sent so because he sent a monster and a spell that means i can't respond using a monster or a spell so he will be able to actually droplet me and i cannot respond to it only card I have left activatable is a Compulse. So we're gonna let him do his thing. He's going to special summon his guy. I know that he's trying to get some plays started. Not even gonna allow him to keep this guy on the field. We're just gonna Compulse it. Not even gonna let him get started. There we go. The reason I did that is because this card right here can special summon itself if you control a Mayakashi. So I removed it so that it couldn't special summon itself. And then he would have had the Mizuki in Grave to do some extra plays after sending it back to Grave. We pretty much stopped him from even getting started. So now that it's on us, pretty much win the game. We're gonna activate removal because we control a machine monster on the field being cannon we're going to be able to add screw serpent back to our hand now we're going to get that drill back from the graveyard and go into star guardian and since we already have wolf in our hand we don't actually have to add wolf so we're going to be able to add serpent back to our hand to give us another follow-up play i don't actually know why i added drill back maybe it was a misclick oh <laughs> I know it was happening. I wanted to show off a little bit. So instead, what I did here, right, you would typically go into Battle Wasp Palma to get the double attack. But I think I just wanted to show off a little bit. So I special summoned the drill fish and I used Serpent in the graveyard because it does have another effect where you can banish itself to increase or decrease a TG monster you control level by one. So I made my drill fish a level two, meaning that I could go into a level seven besides Star Guardian and I went into Moonlight. So it didn't actually have to Moonlight here, but I did do it just for the sake of doing it. I think I was trying 
trolling a little bit. If this card is special summoned right, we're going to be able to target a special summoned monster on the field and return it. So we're just going to return as blue. Now we're going to go into attack with our moonlight and then our cannon. Beautiful game. Beautiful setup. He's on a little bit of a win streak here. So I will say this. There's pretty much, I would say like, okay, the best time to technically speaking affect Valor's uh, TGs would be on summon of Trident. However, they may not go into Trident to play around affect Valor um, or something of that nature. So if they resolve Star Guardian and they choose not to go into Trident, then I won't get another opportunity to affect Valor. So even though technically speaking, Trident is the better affect Valor choice, just in case I choose to affect Valor's Star Guardian. So this is the time where I affect Valor or would DD Crow. You're going to DD Crow the Serpent or you're going to affect Valor the Star Guardian right here. This would be the choke point. If they have the follow-up, then they have the follow-up. So our hand right here is pretty nice. I'm going to be honest with you. I was playing with my food here. So realistically, right, we've already got two wolf and a drill in our hand. We could just search for serpent and striker. And we could just discard a wolf, keep the compulsion in our hand, and we could do a very simple quasar for game. So we didn't choose to do that here. We were playing with our food because I just knew he didn't have any relevant back row. I don't know why. I just knew it didn't matter. So we're going into our five and we're going to go into wander magician. So we're activating. It's chalice. We target it. We pop it, right? So from here, what I would tell you guys to do is to go into a quasar. You would normal summon serpent, special summon drill, go into gladiator, activate the skill, place Recipro on the field. You have a double attack quasar with the omni negate. However, I was just playing with my food a little bit and I, I was being a little bit of, I don't know, I was trolling a little bit. So instead we went into star guardian and we got our double attack off, right? We're going to add back screw serpent for the follow-up play and he dd crows we could have played around the crow by just going gladiator he wouldn't have had anything to crow anyway so we're gonna special summon wolf and we're gonna go into our level eight hama he special summons a wolf which is a little bit annoying because it means that we're not gonna get the otk off because he's got a star guardian on the field now i'm thinking in my head what level eight would he go into because it's not gonna have an effect but i didn't actually think about the fact that it doesn't matter that deeply because he could probably just summon something bigger than this which is what he does so he goes into berserker now i have not actually activated my skill yet and like i showed you in the last game i do play level seven so we're going to activate our skill here placing reciprocal on the field flip it up wander magician is also a tuner so we're going to use them to synchro into moonlight and then return the fl me back to the hand this is what i mean when i say there are like a gazillion lines in the deck that you could do you could technically speak and summon herald very early you could special summon striker go in second then activate the skill put reciprocal and go directly into a herald before doing anything you know what i mean there's a lot of things that you could do with the deck. I would say in this clip, I did not make the most optimal play. I showed this to show you there are multiple lines you could do. And realistically, I should have just Quasar. This was still me being very new with the deck, kind of messing around with the new skill and just kind of playing with my food a little bit. But these are just one of the many routes you could take. This deck is very complex and is very pilot heavy. Um, and I say that to say that it's going to be easy to think the deck is bad if, if the pilot is just not that understanding of all the cards it's a very easy deck uh, to mess up with but we've got game right here we're gonna attack with the moonlight we're gonna attack with the battle wasp and it's pretty much been golden and that's pretty much been the video your boy weatherman your tg god signing out hey why they gotta hate on me i done got me a quarter million views and they still saying they low key they ain't want to come work with the kid but i'm flexing with zay on beats how they ask for a spot at the gym but they leave all the weight on me i don't ask them to wait on me they would ask where they gon' be With a song if they wanted the weatherman I ain't asking to pay no fees She was homeless and needed a spot I ain't asking to pay no lease I ain't asking to say no please I ain't asking to make no cheese Scream fake but it ain't on me Got clean so it ain't no streets Why green if it ain't no keeps Brought cream so it ain't no beef My team say it ain't no chief My demon they hang on me They seemingly ain't no peace I seen him he ain't no beast For real